Hi everyone and welcome to our webinar series for the 2016 online registration. We are the member services team um, from Netball Victoria and we'll be running through the registrations with you today. We'll start off by introducing the team. Firstly, we have uh, Jen Camilleri, who is our member and association support officer. Deb Martin, who is our technology services coordinator. Sarah Jeffrey, who is our member services manager. Um, and Amanda Kappa, who is our member services coordinator. And I'm Ali Truen, the member and association support officer, so welcome. Hello everyone and welcome to the webinar for 2016 online registrations. My name is Ali and I work within the member services team at Netball Victoria. In this webinar, I will be taking you through the online registration process. This will include the six key steps required to set up your online registration form, how it will work and what it will look like. In addition, you should have already received a My Netball Online Registrations Training Manual, so please feel free to refer to this as we run through the session. At the end, I'll briefly touch on financing, Net Set Go, and a few housekeeping matters. So let's get started. After working and consulting with Netball Australia, we have developed six key steps to setting up online registrations. As you can see on your screens, the key steps are listed in front of you. Step one, payment, setting up your payment gateway. Step two, setting up products. Step three, creating an online sign-up form. Step four, updating contact details. Step five, inform and invite members. And step six, reporting. Step one, a payment gateway will allow you to accept member registration payments online into a nominated bank account, hence reducing money handling. There is an option of offline payments, however I will discuss this later in the presentation. All payment gateways must be approved by Netball Australia and this can take up to two weeks from the time it is first submitted. So if you decide to use online payments, then we suggest setting up payment gateway as soon as possible. To set up your payment gateway, please access the link displayed. I will take you there now. When you come to set up your payment gateway, this is what you will see. Most things are pretty self-explanatory as I scroll down, you can see that. Uh, so please go through and enter all the appropriate details. You will see particular fields marked with a red asterisk. These fields are compulsory to complete before you submit the form. I will just note there are two fields marked contact full name and contact phone. These details will be for the person your members can call if they're having trouble processing their payment. On the other hand, the fields marked user first name, last name and user email are for the person who is actually setting up the payment gateway. Once you've completed the form, please click Submit and this will be sent through to Netball Australia to approve. Once approved, your payment gateway will automatically link to your sign-up form through My Netball. I will be able to show you this later in the presentation. The next step is to set up your products. This is done through My Netball. If you're an association or league, you will see both competition management and competition participation. Clubs will only see competition participation. You can access the products page from either tab. Please go to online forms, configuration and products. A product is something you are selling, so for the purposes of registration, when we refer to products, we are referring to membership types, i.e. senior, junior, all abilities and off the court. Please note that you must set up one product for each membership type, one for senior, one for junior, one for all abilities and one for off the court. When you come to set up your products, this is the page you will see. To add your first product, please select Add Member Subscription Product. This is where you will enter the details of each membership type. I'll do an example for Senior. 
So obviously I'm going to name the, se the product a senior registration. Please leave the category as membership. Enter the total price here. The cost price can include club or court fees or any other fees that you charge. It doesn't just have to be Netball Victoria membership because the money will be going straight into your nominated bank account through the payment gateway and we will be invoicing you at a later date. For this particular example, the club charges $10 for their fee on top of the Netball Victoria membership. So the total fee will be $79. Next is the class. You'll see it is already pre-selected as membership subscription registration. Please do not change this. Registrations must be selected as a membership subscription registration so that when your member completes their registration, it will automatically upload onto my netball and be current for the selected year. If saleable item is selected, then you will need to manually input the registration for each player onto my netball. Please make sure member subscription registration is selected. The number available gives you the ability to cap the number of registrations you can accept. For example, if you can only accept 100 registrations, once the registration has been bought 100 times, the product will automatically close. If you don't have a limit, then please leave this blank. Next is the available from and until date. If you would only like this product or registration available up until a certain date, this is where you can limit the date range. For example, I know some football netball clubs and leagues won't accept registrations after the 30th of June. So this is where you can enter this date in for in the available until field. However, if you don't want to put in an available date range, please leave this blank. The active status is whether or not you would like your product to be available to use. I would suggest setting up this product that you leave it active. When you no longer wish the product to be active, you can come back at a later date and untick active to make it inactive. Sort order is the order in which the product will display on your online sign-up form. Enter the relevant number to where you'd like it to be displayed. For example, if you'd like the product to appear at the top of the screen, please select one. Otherwise, you can leave it blank. Subscription settings refers to the how long the subscription will last. As all Netball Victoria memberships expire on the 31st of December every year, you may wish to enter 31st December 2016. If you don't want to put in dates, you can leave it blank. The next is the person role. You must select the relevant person role for this product. For this particular example, I'm going to select player senior, but if it's a junior, you may wish to select player junior. The next part is very important. It's the registration settings. You must select where the registration will slot in under. If you are a club, please select club. If you're an association or league, please select your association or league. You do not want to select Netball Victoria as you will not be able to see the registration. In this case, as I'm using Test Netball Victoria 1, I'm going to select that as my association. Once you've selected your club or association, it will take a moment to refresh the page and load the registration type and period. As you can see, it's just done. Once the page has up reloaded, please select the relevant registration type. In this case, as I'm setting up a senior registration, I'm going to select senior as the registration type. Please make sure that it is an active registration type. Those that are inactive, as you can see when I was scrolling through the list, will be marked with inactive. Next is the registration time. As you'll be setting up the product for 2016, please select 2016. The final section in setting up a product is discounts. If you offer discounts for those that register early or for any other reason, please enter the details in this section here. 
otherwise leave it blank. Before updating and hence creating the product, please double check over all your details to ensure there is no mistakes and you are happy with everything. In this process, you will notice that the Netball Australia, Netball Victoria and association fee structure will appear. Please make sure that your simple total is equal or greater to the display total for the fee structure. If your association league has zero next to their fee structure, it just means you haven't set up your registration type with a price. This will not affect the payment. So when you're happy with everything, please click update to create your product. It will display a big green tick when it has processed. You can now return to the management screen by clicking back to management screen. Your product should now be showing. Please repeat this process for the rest of your registration types, i.e. in this case, I would need to complete it for an all abilities membership and an off the court membership as my junior membership is, has already been set up. Once you've set up each of your products, you can now set up your sign up form. To get to your sign up form, please go to online forms, configuration, sign up forms. A similar page to where the products were created will appear titled Sign Up Form Manager. Please select Add New Online Registration Form. The page will automatically load with Use Blank Form. Please choose NA Membership Sign Up Template and click Refresh. This will load the template form. You will see an asterisk next to various fields. This indicates that they are mandatory fields and need to be completed. Firstly, you will need to select a title for your form. In this example, I'm going to title it 2016 Registrations. The next fields are the descriptions. One that will sit at the top of the form, i.e. top description, and one that will sit at the bottom of the form, i.e. bottom description. You will see that there is already text in the top description. This details some information on the login process. You can edit these descriptions by simply clicking edit. You will need to set up the status of your form. If you are setting up your form ahead of time and don't yet want it to be visible, you can leave the form as inactive and come back to edit it to active later. Alternatively, if you would like the form to be active, you can change the status now. As this is a test environment, I'm going to leave the form as inactive. The sort order again refers to the order in which the form will display on the website. You can change this number, but it isn't really necessary. This disclaimer is locked as global disclaimer, so please leave as is. The contact details will automatically set to the user who is logged in and is setting up the form. Please change these as required. The next section is payment settings. If you have applied for a payment gateway, it, and it has been approved by Netball Australia, this is where it will display in the drop-down box. Please select your payment gateway from the drop-down box. As this is a test environment, I will have no gateway. It is here that I will mention offline payments. It is possible to have an online form and an offline payment where you would either get, have to get the money transferred into your bank account or collect it separately from your members. If you decide to have an offline payment, please select no gateway from the payment gateway options and keep the allow offline payment option ticked. Please keep in mind though, it will be your responsibility to collect the payment from each of your members so that you can either pass it on to your association if you are a club or if you're an association, have it in your account to be direct debited or invoiced by Netball Victoria. We would recommend having either all online or all offline payments and not a mixture of both. Now, the next field refers to the processing fee. 
As with anything that you do pay online, there will be a processing fee for each transaction. This is charged by our payment gateway provider PIN Payments and unfortunately is unavoidable when using any online payment platform. You will need to tick whether the processing payment is going to be charged to the online or the offline payment and whether you will have a fixed or a variable charge. If you're having online payments, please tick apply to online payments. A fixed charge is a flat rate that will be charged to each transaction. If you go with this option, we suggest setting the fixed charge as $2 as this will cover any charge from PIN payments. Alternatively, you can choose the variable charge option. This will calculate the percentage of the total amount as opposed to the fixed rate. Hence, it can work out to be a lesser cost for your members. If you choose this option, please enter 1.78%. That will ensure all fees are covered and the club or association won't lose out. Please be mindful that you can also add a processing fee for offline payments as well. This can cover the cost of administration hours spent chasing the money from your members. If you're having an offline payment, you have the option of entering details for how you would like your members to pay for their payment. This can be done in the offline payment description. For example, this could include details of your bank account and to use their MyNetball ID as their reference, or it could simply be find Jane Smith and pay in cash by the first round of competition. It's up to you. To edit this description, simply click edit. Everything else in terms of currency format, tax description and tax rate is set, so please leave as is. The next section is form fields. As you can see, there are already default fields that will be included on the form. Have a scroll through these fields and decide if you'd like to add any additional fields onto your form. If so, please click additional fields. Here you will see a list of available fields. Find the fields you'd like to add in and double click the field to move it across to the right hand side. Once you are happy with all the fields selected, you can move on to the registration type products. You'll notice that each of the products you have already added earlier will be showing in the available registration type products. To add the products to your form and hence make them available for purchase, please double click to add them to the selected registration type product box. The last section of setting up the online form is the advanced settings. You'll see that create logins for new registrations is already ticked. Please leave this setting. If you would not like to disclose the breakdown of your registration cost, please leave unticked the display payment split information if available. The syndication options refers to the registration filtering down to clubs or entity teams. As clubs should have their own form, this option isn't relevant unless you would like the registration to filter down into entity teams. Hence, you can just leave this unticked unless it applies to you. Before hitting update, please take a moment to go back over the information you have entered and make sure that you are happy with everything. If you do hit update and you then find some information that you want to change, don't worry, you can still come back and edit it at a later date. Once this has processed correctly, a big green tick will appear. You can now go back to the management screen to take you back to the sign up for management page. Here you will see your form is listed. You'll notice next to your form that there is an edit button. This is where you can come back to edit it at a later stage. I'll actually quickly just take you in here now because there is another important piece of information I would like to show you. You'll see now that your form has been created, it has a unique share link. This link can be sent or shared to your members, hence allowing them to access your form. 
I will discuss your options later in the presentation in terms of communication. Once you've completed this step, you now have an online registration form. Congratulations. In addition, you're now halfway through the key steps to hosting an online form. Moving on to the next step, which is updating your members' contact details and in particular, their email addresses. I cannot stress enough how important this step is because without having accurate email addresses for your members in the database, you risk that all the work you've done up until this point will become null and void. Now you're probably wondering why this is so important. It's important because your members need to be able to log in using their MyNetball ID to complete the form correctly. These details will be sent to them via email when they go to retrieve their account details. So if they don't have a valid email address or have a generic email address listed on their record, they won't receive the email. This will either result in them calling you or the creation of a new record. If they create a new record, we will have a similar issue to what was experienced this year with all the duplicate records. Now, we know that it may not be possible to have 100% email accuracy for all of your members, so that is why we are suggesting a minimum accuracy of 80% to use online registrations in 2016. One of the easiest ways to update member contact details is through the newly created page, Person Contact Details. Here you can find this under either the Competition Management or the Competition participation tab. Here you will see a list of your members and their contact information. You can filter by a role type if you wish to limit the number of records being displayed. Simply find the record that you wish to edit and on the left hand side click the pencil button to edit. Enter in those details that you wish to update and when you've completed click the green tick. Alternatively, you can enter a person's record by searching them individually. To do this, please go to the person search function under people. Type in the person's name and click search. Once you have found the person's record, please push edit next to the name to edit their relevant details. Okay, so once you've got all your member details updated, the next step in the process is to inform and invite your members. You will need to inform all of your members about the registration process for 2016 and how it's all going to work. So this may include details about whether registration will be online or offline, what date they need to be registered by, who the primary contact from your club or association is to discuss registrations and any other details you would like them to know. How you do this is up to you. I would recommend via email, website or social media, but that's just me. Once you've informed your members, you will need to invite them to complete the, their registrations. In this case, you might be inviting them to use the online form, providing them with a link to access the form and outlining the steps they need to complete their registrations successfully. Again, how you do this is up to you, but I find social media, emails and website tend to be the most effective channels for communication. You could also make the process easier for your members by sending out an email with their username and password to log on to their form to register. I should mention that their username will be their MyNetball ID, which is also their Netball Victoria number. They are the same number. I will run through these details in our housekeeping at the end. If you plan on sending out them details to them, I would communicate this so they don't receive the email, not knowing what it is, and then delete it. We'll move on to the final stage of the process, and that is all important reporting. Netball Australia has actually put a lot of work into reporting on the online form over the past 12 months and it has paid off because the reporting work is working fairly well for the online forms. There are three main types of reporting that you will want to access. The first is the transaction report. The transaction report shows you who has used the form and completed their registrations. It shows whether the payment was online and provides a reference number or if it was online and what the payment status is. 
Hence, this can help you reconcile offline payments from members. The second is the Payment Gateway Report. This displays all the pricing details. So for example, if Jane Smith purchased a membership and a piece of merchandise, it would show the total price they paid into your account. Hence, this report can help with reconcil reconciling your bank account. The final report you may use is the Registrations Product Report, which shows the products bought by the member. Continuing on from our last example where Jane Smith bought a membership and a piece of merchandise, this report would show what the me membership was, i.e. a senior, and what the piece of merchandise was, i.e. a training t-shirt. Hence, this is a good report to help fulfilling a product or membership order. I will quickly show you where you can find each of these reports. The transaction report is found under online forms, reports, and transaction report. Because no one has completed the form that I have set up yet, there is no data in here, but when you have had members complete your form, you will see that it shows the person, their ID, the amount paid, the payment status, and the payment method. If you're accepting offline payments, then you can simply change the payment status to paid by clicking actions and updating their payment to the relevant category, i.e. whether it's paid, not paid or cancelled. You can also change the registration form to the relevant form or keep it showing as all forms. In addition, you can also change the date range as required. The next report, the Payment Gateway Report, can be found in the same section. Online Forms, Report, Payment Gateway Report. Here you can adjust each field as required to generate a specific report. Once payments have actually gone through your gateway, this will show data. Unfortunately at the moment, as mentioned before, because we haven't set up a payment gateway and had any registrations come through for the test environment, there is no data to display. The final report I'll quickly show you is the registration product report. Again, this is found in the same area, online forms, reports, registration product report. This report is fairly similar to the transaction report, however it has the item description which shows exactly what the member bought. Hence if you're selling merchandise this is where you'd see what they actually bought. Now that we've covered the six steps to online registration, you are now able to go through and set it all up for your own club, association or league. But before you do, I just want to quickly touch on financing and Net Set Go for 2016, as well as run through a few little housekeeping matters. Financing in 2016 will work exactly as it always has. The member will pay to their club, the association or league will invoice the club and Netball Victoria will invoice the association or league. The only difference is instead of you guys actually manually registering each of your members, they'll be doing that for you. In terms of financing, nothing will change for 2016, but if you have any questions or want to clarify anything, please speak with someone from member services or the finance team and we'll be more than happy to assist. I also want to touch on Net Set Go registrations for 2016. Net Set Go registrations will the, remain the same as they were in 2015, which was through the program portal on My Netball. All Net Set Go registrations must be completed online through the Net Set Go website or manually in the Enrolment Manager. Please note that the form will be separate to your registration forms. We apologise for any inconvenience, however due to the way NetSet Go is set up in my netball with the program portal, it is not possible to merge the two forms together. In addition, can you also please remind your members that an All Abilities and Junior registration is not a NetSet Go registration. If a member accidentally registers as an All Abilities or Junior, they will not receive a pack. They must be registered as a NetSet Go participant to receive a pack. Should you have any queries around this, please speak with either your associational league, if you're a club, or if you're an associational league, please speak to the junior development team at Netball Victoria. Just before we finish off today, 
I want to run through one last thing. The page that I'm about to show you is a really great tool for you to see the status of your members' minor ball accounts. It's the Participant Logins page. Again, this can be accessed from Competition Management or Competition Participation tabs. It's found under People and Participant Logins. So this is what the Participant Logins page looks like if you haven't seen it before. As you can see, it shows each record which you can filter by role and by account status. It shows what their email address they have under their record and their current account status. If you need to edit their email address, you can do so by simply clicking edit next to their record. So if you want to see which of your members has no account, simply change the filter to no account and click search persons. This will display all the records under your club or association with no account. You can then select all or the relevant records and then from the actions drop down box create an account for them and then click perform action. This will create an account for each of the selected people and in doing so send them an email to the email address listed with their account username and password. In addition, if you have a member come to you and say they've tried five times and it's locked their account, this is where you can come to unlock their account. The record will display in orange text and it will mark the status as locked. To unlock the account, simply select the record, choose unlock from the actions drop down box and then perform action. This will automatically unlock their account and allow them to continue on with their registration. That brings us to close for the webinar session today. You're now ready to go ahead and set up your online forms for 2016. If you have any questions on anything that we've gone over today, please feel free to contact your association or league or someone within the member services team at Netball Victoria and we'll be more than happy to assist. Thank you for your time today and all the best with your registrations in 2016.